Nation, a fit in 10. Welcome to day 31. And uh, if you have not been sending me in your feedback or your food journals, please make sure you do. This is going to help you. This is going to help you. And it's normal as a challenge goes on that I see less and less and less of this because people start thinking about it less and less. And this is a big mistake because giving me your feedback and sending me in your food journals keeps you more accountable. It is work, I understand that, but the work results in more results, right? The work pays off. If you put the work in, you'll see more results. If you are more accountable to me, you will see more results. It's just the way it is. So do it for you. It's not for me, but I want you to do well. And uh, so I want you to put the work in, which uh, allows me to interact with you more, which then makes this dynamic between you and I uh, more fruitful. And as a result, you get better results. It's just the way it works. All right, um, feedback here. So let's get into it. This person writes, this is under something you need help with. So cardio, I cannot seem to figure out how to safely, how to do it safely for my body. I have been including bike rides as I run errands um, as my cardio, but the, in truth, I'm not monitoring my heart rate and I'm dealing with a lot of discomfort and weakness in my hips and low back such that going for long walks can become painful. So I have not attempted to run, run or jump rope as I had originally intended. I know I've mentioned this before, but if you suggest an alternate low impact activity, I would appreciate it. Okay, so there are a couple things here. One, what you could do is you could walk and you could break it up. That would be okay. So you may not be able to handle the volume of let's say a half an hour walk with speed walking, but maybe you can handle 10 minutes. And so you could break it up into, you know, spurts of 10 minutes. I realize that maybe this may not be uh, as easy. Uh, well, actually it might be easier in some ways. It just depends on how things work for you. For me, once I get going, I kind of just want to get things done. Um, but this would be a great way to break up your day, especially if you're working from home, which I don't know if you are or not. I don't think you are. Um, but regardless, it will break up your day. It will make you, it will allow you to be more productive. Um, also, you know, if you have these things put in your day, for example, these 10 minute spurts of cardio, it will give you a target to shoot for, for whatever you're working on. So for example, you know, you know that in, let's say an hour's time, you're going to get up and you go for a 10 minute walk. You say, okay, I have an hour to get whatever it is that I need to get done, done. Or at least you set yourself up with a, with a goal for your work. Get that task done or a part of that task done and then uh, move on to your walk. So there's one, one option. The other option is we just go with, with less impactful activities like uh, stationary bike uh, and or elliptical uh, and or uh, the um, the step mill. So there, there are those big machines. We used to have one in the gym in the corner. It will revolve. It's a revolving stairs that you walk up. Uh, I don't suggest swimming only because swimming, it's really hard to get your heart rate up. Swimming is a great activity. It's not that I don't suggest doing it. It's great. But we want to get your heart rate up. And I, I don't suggest that you ride your bike just to run your errand. I mean, that's no, I, let me rephrase that. It's fine to ride your bike. Just don't count that as cardio because it's um, to ride your bike on the street and get your heart rate up to where I want it to be. It's very hit and miss. Your, 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 your overall heart rate is going to be lower. So um, I, I don't want you doing that. Okay. Keep riding your bike. This is great. But um, dedicate or have dedicated time towards uh, your cardio. Uh, the other thing you can do too, when you're walking uh, or jogging perhaps, is to do it on grass or track or something. That'll make a big difference. 
All right, um, is there anything you'd like me to cover in this week's video series? Stress and belly fat. Please cut through the BS I see online. Is there any link between emotional stress and bulk of fat around my middle? Uh, yes, there is. And that's just because when people are stressed out, they overeat. It's that simple. Or they drink. Um, so there is. But if you're asking me, is there a link between I'm suddenly stressed and then fat just mysteriously starts building up? No, that's, that's nonsense. Now, um, there can be some hormonal differences in terms of where fat is deposited in the, in the, in the body. Not a massive change, but to some degree, this can be the case. Uh, in the case of this, like, you know, I, I've seen ads like this, and I don't know if you're talking about the one that I've seen, but they, they make it sound as though if you're stressed, you suddenly and mysteriously gain fat in your midsection. No, this is nonsense. It's just like medications, okay? Uh, medications, you take this medication, you gain weight. No, you, you're only gaining weight from the medication is because, the only reason you gain weight from medication is because you started eating more, okay? Because the medication increased your hunger cues. Um, so there is no direct link between this. As I mentioned, if you are stressed, you might look for certain outlets like uh, drinking and eating junk food and yeah, then you're going to gain weight, right? So, but that's not because of stress. That's because you have been uh, indulging in food. So in extra food, in bad food. Okay, so hopefully that helps. Um, I saw a really great video the other day um, uh, from a popular YouTuber and uh, he was talking about um, ways of increasing your metabolism, potential ways. Um, and you know, another thing came up that kind of just reminded me of this. And I, th I thought I just mentioned it right now is, um, he mentioned, uh, a, a number of studies, or maybe it was one in particular. I can't actually remember now. He usually doesn't re reference one. He usually references a bunch. And, um, anyways, they were talking about how people's metabolisms vary from person to person, equivalenting age and and body weight and, and uh, sex. And they saw this big discrepancy in different metabolisms. Some people burning 1500 calories, some people burning something like 1500 calories a day, some people burning 5,000 calories a day. But the video gave a, uh, it, it didn't, it, 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 was mis it, was, it was misleading because it wasn't your metabolism, it was, it was your metabolism, but it wasn't your BMR, which is what most people think of when they think of their metabolism. What it was is total energy expenditure, which is what should have been stated in the video. And I could see it in the graph. It said TEE, so total energy expenditure. And then where people fell on this graph. And uh, so, you know, uh, we, my point is, is we don't have these crazy differences amongst each other, okay? TEE, your, your total energy, energy expenditure is based on you know, exercise, non-exercise, you know, everything you're doing throughout the day, including thermic effect of food, etc. So, you know, you can't, you know, if you compare somebody who's exercising a lot versus somebody who's not, and you say that person's got a way higher metabolism, well, of course they do because they're expending a lot of energy, right? So in order to expend energy, you have to metabolize things. If you Things have to be metabolized. Energy has to be produced from uh, whatever the food that you ate or the fat that's be being broken down or the glycogen that's being released from the muscle. That is all metabolic processes that you're demanding of your body in the moment when you're outputting the energy. So those are all metabolic processes. So that's all contributing to your metabolism, which gives you a greater metabolism. Anyways. Um... I guess I kind of digressed on that, but I really want to touch, touch upon that. I really want to talk about that, but the video was really good. All right, I'm not really sure why I talked about that, but it's, it's kind of related, sort of. Not really, actually, but. Um, okay, message of the day, because I really am sorry. I just, I had to talk about that. I thought it was interesting, um, but I thought it was also misleading. Uh, okay, message of the day. 
Okay, on this day um, 31, no matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and most importantly, never give up. No matter how you feel, get up, dress up, show up, and most importantly, never give up. The hardest part out of anything, and this goes for me, believe me, I won't get into the details, but there are certain things that I find really hard to do in my life, and but once I start doing them, once I get into it and I start doing it, it, it just, I, then I get into my flow or whatever you want to call it. Okay, so we just got to know that we got to do it and we got to start it. And once you start it, okay, like your cardio session or your weights or whatever, it just gets, it gets easier. It does. Okay, so just keep going with it. Even if you don't feel like it, you got to just do it. You just got to, you just got to do it. Okay. You just have to put your mind to it and do it and quit thinking about it. Positive energy, positive vibes. Believe in yourself for the love of God. Give some gratitude and I'll talk to you tomorrow.